Thank you, Chair. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Kamar Usman, Head of Textiles in ICSC. The topic of my presentation is Textiles, Global Challenges, and Vision of ICSC. Textile trade has increased from $96 billion in 1980 to $800 billion in 2020. Trade in textiles was addressed under WTO Agreement on Textiles and Clothing 1994, which remained in field for 10 years. And on January 1, 2005, quotas were eliminated. In post-quota era, the textile trade has been doubled, a highly positive impact. Downstream clothing sector is labor-intensive. Therefore, the manufacturing started shifting to countries having lower wages. Countries having high income graduated from textiles and moved to complex and more sophisticated products. As Doha round was not concluded, Swiss formula was not agreed, Therefore, import tariffs could not be further brought down as a result, developed countries under Article 24 of WTO started entering into free trade agreements or provided unilateral concessions to certain countries, putting others as at a significant disadvantage. Importantly, least developed countries who enjoy quota-free trade have zero import tariffs in most of developed countries in post-quota era. That has given them a substantial edge over their competitors. Market access is important amongst all the elements in trade, and it is vital for the textile sector of any country. There is a need to look into it for sustainable development of this sector. In post-quota regime, the trade shifted from developed economies having high income to countries having low wages. This provided an opportunity for countries to import raw materials under temporary importation schemes and convert them into finished products known as downstream or bottom-up model. The success of downstream model is in the fact that with minimum investment, countries achieved high value addition and generated massive jobs. The success is further augmented by duty-free excess and relaxed rules of origin in major importing countries. Therefore, trade shifted in favor of clothing, which accounted for 41% of total textiles in 1980, increased to 62% in 2019. The downstream model can still be a successful approach for countries entering in textiles. In past, textiles and clothing products were sold by the industry to a distribution sector, mostly composed of small and medium-sized retailers. Today, distribution is increasingly controlled by a small number of big players who, by virtue of their size, can dictate terms and conditions of the trade, including the pricing mechanism. Overall, the system has therefore changed from one that was producer-driven to one that is customer-driven, where the customers are themselves the distributors. Therefore, imports have been concentrated in developed countries. USA share in world's imports was 10% in 1980, increased to 16%. Germany, 8%. Japan, UK, and France share is approximately 5% and, other, and are other leaders in imports. When buying has been concentrated to developed countries, likewise, manufacturing also got concentrated to few countries. China's share in total exports was only 4% in 1980, was increased to 36% in 2020. Textile manufacturing is now a one-way traffic. Bangladesh share in 1980 was nearly zero, and today it is more than 5% and growing. Vietnam entered in textile exports in late 90s, and by 2020, its share is near to 5%. India, with all the cotton production, has only been able to double its share in textile exports from 2% to 4%, while Pakistan only from 1% to 2% between 1980 to 20. 2020 in 40 years. Similar to big retailers, manufacturing is also getting limited to big production houses, slowly taking small and medium enterprises out of business, a concern as downstream sector is less capital intensive and should be encouraged for generating new entrepreneurship. It is astonishing that Africa, which is producing 6% of world cotton, is exporting only $4 billion of raw materials and $10 billion of finished products while they are importing 14 billion of raw materials and 11 billion of finished products. They are even unable to produce finished products to cater their own needs, while Bangladesh is importing raw materials of $10 billion, catering their entire own needs, as their finished imports are only $0.3 billion and exporting more than $37 billion of finished products. Export of raw materials from Bangladesh is less than $1 billion. For developed economies, the trend is totally different. They are mostly exporters of raw materials, semi-processed raw materials, and importing finished products.
Just like trade values, China has no comparison in installed capacities as well. In 2019, 6.9 million short staple spindles were installed, and 51% were installed only in China. Out of total 237 million short uh, staple spindles in the world, 97 million short staple spindles are installed in China, followed by India at 54 million, Pakistan and Bangladesh have 14 million short staple spindles. Only 4 million short staple spindles are installed in Africa. There are 14.5 million long staple spindles in the world, 6.5 million in Asia, followed by Western Europe at 4.1 million long staple spindles. China is again a leader with 3.5 million long staple spindles. In woven fabric production, Asia again takes the lead with 1.4 million shuttleless looms installed out of the total 1.8 million shuttleless looms, followed by East Europe with 6% share, that is just a little over 0.1 million shuttleless looms. China is again the world leader with 1 million shuttleless looms, followed by India, only 18,000, that is 1% shuttleless looms are installed in Africa. In current scenario, only those textile producing countries will survive who will adapt to the changing trade environment through a continuous process of restructuring and modernization, reduce their inefficiencies, develop new products and consolidate, particularly in the value-added subsectors. There are challenges and which provide opportunities to foster, but only for those who deliberate and find a solution with mutual consensus. Market access is by far the biggest challenge for majority of the countries. Country, countries are entering into free trade agreements or forming uh, economic blocks. This gives them an advantage over other countries. Trade agreements are currently at center of many policy debates and are likely to shape trade and economic relations in the coming years. Some of these discussions are about reversing or renegotiating current agreements, as in the case of Brexit. In many other cases, often involving developing countries, new trade agreements have been concluded or are being negotiated, including the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for a Trans-Pacific Partnership, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership between the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, countries and its major trading partners. Further trade is being restricted through placing high import tariffs, especially on finished products to develop the domestic industry. Even few have placed non advalorum duties as well. This can also be debatable as placing high tariffs on finish is an anti-export bias and also impart inefficiencies. Moreover, in many countries, the upstream value chain uh, plays any of the trade defense measures such as anti-dumping, countervailing, and safeguard on their products, putting downstream industry at a disadvantage or exports by another country. Moreover, non-tariff and technical barriers on trade are also placed to protect the domestic industry. This has restricted the trade and textile value chain could not grow as it should have been for the benefit of consumers and industry. Another major challenge is sustainability through social and environmental compliance certifications. Manufacturing countries, importing countries have their own legislation and then retail buying houses many a times all have their own compliance requirements. It is only the manufacturer who must comply with the conditions and ultimately the big production houses can only meet the requirement and SMEs slowly moving out. Often it is a trust deficit between uh, the implementation of laws. Due to incidents, the retailers are also justified to have a third party audit. It is also interesting to note that the big production houses, audits are conducted separately by different retailers, though at least at that level it can be standardized. In past, the sustainability buying houses and retailers also developed programs such as Accord in which long-term buying was also assured. It is time to discuss the matter from various angles, including manufacturers and buyers. Mostly countries have established regulatory organizations to have a check. Therefore, their feedback will also be very important. Intellectual property rights play an important role in development of fashion brands and trademarks. Real value in finished products come from establishment of brands. Moreover, IPRs has become more important with the development of e-commerce. It is a dream for every company and country to move from own equipment manufacturing to own design manufacturing to own a brand. However, the enforcement is not effective in many markets. Cost of doing business is one of the important concerns for the textile industry. In fact, there are many countries having market access, but they have high cost of doing business. Moreover, high and volatile raw materials cost, high energy prices, and recently freight charges have created uncertainty. 
After such a scenario, a sudden drop is normally witnessed. Moreover, over-reliance on some countries for availability of accessories and raw materials of allied industries such as chemicals and spare parts has also opened a new discussion and there need to be deliberated among a dire value chain. Competition is fierce among producers to keep the market share, textile industry lobbies and get concessions from the government which is not possible for some countries. One may argue that countries may provide legitimate support the schemes policies and initiatives by the government may be discussed as knowledge sharing to take benefit by other countries textile is no more uh, no longer limited to traditional aesthetic products it is now broadening in performance based technical textile products divided in 12 categories such as geotech meritech sports tech technical textiles can be a niche markets for newcomers if information and knowledge is shared especially by technology transfer a lot of research has been carried out by research institutes and universities new products modified energy efficient sustainable processes are developed however in silos to augment and take benefit it is important that a platform be created to take commercial advantage of such research and development moreover to improve productivity vocational tra- uh, trainings on modern lines should be shared by the developers of machinery and chemical manufacturers maximum employment is in clothing and 2 to 3 months of training can change life of a family especially women a great source of women empowerment leading textile exporting countries are looking to invest to take benefit of lower wages and availability of resources in other regions no doubt textile is becoming global value chain this will provide the opportunity that benefits of textile would be widespread private sector is looking for right opportunity a country offering better infrastructure long term policy commitments would ultimately be the destination countries are also finding it difficult to diversify markets and products they are stuck in volume based products in cut throat competition by reducing cost and rely on government support and subsidies at one end countries are looking for fdi and then talk about subsidies and support then it is capacity utilization the capacity utilization rates in the various segments still show significant differences between the upstream and downstream sector for july 2021 fiber producers and spinners reported on average high rates of 79% and 78% respectively while finishers uh, textile chemical producers and garment producers on the other hand saw their rates at lower levels at 59% 63% and 68% respectively Most segments are expecting capacity utilization rates to increase slightly by January 2022 only garment producer and finishers uh, anticipate lower rates uh, that is 59% and 56% other another important challenge is profit sharing among the various segments of the textile value chain these are difficult topics but ICAC would deliberate them with the entire value chain bone clothing another difficult topic the trade of bone clothing has increased from 1 billion dollar in 2001 to 4.5 billion dollars by 2020 but importantly the quantities are huge they have low unit values and import tariffs are marginal this is hindering development of value added sectors in many countries and within the value added sector it is creating issues for smes but there is a social element as well how to find a balance it would require a lot of deliberations textile is a global chain but how to become part of the global chain is a question mark as maximum employment is in downstream industry therefore everyone wants lines shared in it the e-commerce is providing an opportunity even to new countries and new enterprises especially small and medium however there remain challenges to establish an entire chain of distribution and warehousing world moved from supplier to buyers driven and then to direct to store and now manufacturers to directly to consumer let alone in us the online clothing sales increased from 27% to 2018 to 46% in 2020 opportunity is there but again full of challenges realizing the importance of textile value chain for sustainable development of cotton icac has recently transformed and introduced textile as a full time subject another important highlight is constitution of public sector advisory council comprising cotton producers ginners traders textile value chain machinery allied industries and lastly brands and retailers pscac will play an important role as providing a forum for entire value chain and the idea is to discuss the challenges and bringing agreed upon positions to member governments and organizations concerned it will also provide an opportunity to value a chain to get the point of view of backward and forward subsectors build narrative 
and governments to know the global perspective. ICAC is providing unprecedented services to cotton sector. The cotton data book, fiber consumption, demand and supply, costing, pricing, and networking across the globe. Similar to cotton, the ICAC will develop platform to share knowledge in textiles value chain, support governments to formulate long-term policies, share best sustainable uh, practices and policies. Further, ICAC will establish links with research institutes, universities, fashion houses, testing and compliance organizations. ICAC vision will be to develop a sustainable global textiles and clothing value chain comprising producers, manufacturers, allied industry distributors, and retailers to fully utilize the potential in member countries to generate maximum value addition and create maximum employment. ICAC is unique as it represents now entire value chain along with the governments to work for all. Thank you.